Good morning. My name is Pastor Andrea Ernest. It's a joy to gather with you in worship this morning. I would call your attention to the announcements that are in your bulletin. Especially I want to point out that next Sunday is Reformation Sunday, which is kind of a big deal for us Lutherans. A special time to celebrate, and it will be a uh, combined service here at St. Peter's. I also call your attention to all the prayer concerns on the back of the purple sheet. Does anyone else have any announcements or prayer concerns they'd like to share at this time? Uh, I do. Uh, Jordan English, who is a member of this uh, uh, parish, uh, his father died yesterday, complications of COVID, so we should keep him in our prayers. Well, prayers for all who mourn the death of Mr. English. Anyone else? Okay, so let us quiet our hearts and minds to prepare ourselves for worship this day. Please stand. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 to 9. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the Psalm, Psalm 126, responsibly. When the Lord restored the forces of Zion, then, we're like, then we were like those who dream. Then with, then with our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy, then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their seed. <clears throat> the second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verses 23 to 28. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory 
As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out, cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Less than two months ago, my family gathered to bury my sister-in-law, who had died of melanoma. My brother and I now share the sad bond of having each lost our spouses to cancer. His wife was 59. My husband was 57. Strangely, each of them died before both of their parents, and each was the second of their parents' children to die. Countless prayers were said in homes and in congregations for their healing. But there we were, gathered in a cemetery again. It can be a lot, this life. So perhaps you can understand that I can have real mixed feelings about a story like that in today's gospel. Maybe you do, too. I struggle sometimes with the miracle healing stories of the New Testament. I can't always see what to do with them. Now, I'm not saying that I distrust that Jesus brought healing to the blind and the deaf and the crippled. I simply don't know what that healing means for us today. For we who profess our belief and who pray and pray and pray faithfully, yet who don't see the same sudden restoration of sight and sound and leaping up to renewal and wholeness of life. We who suffer and to witness suffering and wonder why miraculous healing doesn't seem to come our way too. It is clear in the Gospels that Jesus cared fully about the whole physical lives of everyone he met. But our lives in this world mean that we have known 
perhaps experienced ourselves, the all too real significance of suffering with no ready answers or solutions. So sometimes I struggle to see. Maybe you join me in that. In today's gospel healing story, a blind man called Bartimaeus begs for alms as a large crowd comes along with Jesus. And Bartimaeus cries out loudly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. After being scolded by the crowd to shush, he shouts all the louder so that Jesus then asks that same crowd to bring him forward. Take heart, get up, he's calling you, they say to Bartimaeus, who promptly leaps up, throwing off his cloak. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asks him. And when Bartimaeus asks to see again, Jesus assures him that his faith has made him well. And we are told that immediately, immediately, the once blind man regains his sight and from then on follows Jesus on his way. It's a wonderful story, one that I've been learning since I was a child in, kid, in uh, Sunday school. But I have to really pay attention to see that, in fact, there are many aspects of this tale that offer all kinds of miracles. Bartimaeus is a blind man as the story begins. He himself, though, has become unseen in society. We can tell by his need to beg, literally beg, for his no doubt meager on the margins living. Unseen by the swirl of the crowd around him, who are annoyed by even hearing him try to speak to Jesus. He is one of the invisible of their day-to-day -day lives, and their spiritual blindness makes him invisible to them on that roadway as well. His well-being is not worth their attention, their sight. And having to see him and deal with his suffering would only disrupt their own comfortable worlds. Jesus, however, is not interested in their comfortable blindness. He opens everybody's eyes. And once the people of the crowd truly see him, they cannot unsee him. Once their eyes are open to see Bartimaeus, so are their hearts. As they go from telling Bartimaeus to be quiet, they are healed to telling him that to take heart. The crowd seems to be healed from incessant indifference, indifference that has made this, this disabled person, indeed any person, a beggar. They have been healed to be people of compassion and empathy who see the humanity in this once invisible man.
in Jesus' healing of the crowd then, before he sees miraculously, Bartimaeus first is seen miraculously. Jesus grants the healing gift not only of restored vision, but of community, of being recognized of being connected. Another key aspect of this healing story is how potent Bartimaeus's vision is even before his healing. In his time in this world, it was a rare thing for Jesus to be recognized, to be seen by the people around him, even by his own disciples, for whom he really was. Most people, then and now, tend to see Jesus through clouded lenses that show only what we want to see. But the blind man in the crowd cried out, Son of David. And Jesus was genuinely brought into focus as the long awaited Messiah, the Lord, the very Son of God. It is a lovely moment in this gospel text when Jesus himself is truly seen. Bartimaeus and Jesus truly see each other wholly and purely. Yet another significant moment in this story is when Bartimaeus throws off his cloak in order to follow Jesus. For Bartimaeus, that cloak would have been his most valuable, if not his only, possession. His cloak would have been his shelter from the weather during the day and his only warmth and security when he slept outside at night. What's more, beggars would often spread their cloak out in front of them when they begged to hold any donations, any coins that could be tossed in, anything anyone might stoop to give them. And then at the end of the day, the cloak could be gathered in and hold the poultry alms that meant sustenance itself. That cloak had no doubt been relied upon to keep Bartimaeus alive for heaven knows how long. But he tossed it aside in a second to start a new life going the way of Jesus. He cast aside all that he knew and all that he treasured to venture forth into the total unknown, to become a disciple. He is all trust and all commitment. Can you imagine the faith such an act would take to follow Jesus, with all that you have and all that you are, without looking back. Such an act is certainly made possible because Jesus is so fully present with Bartimaeus as well as with the crowd. 
and Bartimaeus sees and hears Jesus with all that he is. Jesus, God with us, whose first hours in this world were spent lying helplessly in the hay as a baby, and whose dying hours were spent suspended on the cross to suffer for and with each one of us is so fully present. And though I've mentioned I can sometimes struggle with stories like this one. When I really look, I find much that is profoundly moving here. And much that is so relevant for you and for me. Before Jesus heals Bartimaeus, he asks him a crucial question. What do you want me to do for you? It might seem like a superfluous or unnecessary question. After all, we know what Bartimaeus' problem is. It's cited as his defining characteristic. The man is blind. He needs to be able to see. But Jesus looks and sees the man in his entirety, in his full humanity. He does not reduce Bartimaeus to his blindness alone. And so he asks him the question, what do you want me to do for you? What is in the fullness of your heart? What are your deepest desires and longings? Jesus honors the real human being before him and all his human complex needs and wants, all that he is and all that he longs to be, Jesus asks, and so he meets Bartimaeus just exactly where he is. Fully seeing him, fully hearing him. What do you want me to do for you? It is such a meaningful question and such a demanding question. In these days, I am very concerned for my brother's grief. I want his pain to end, though I know that does not come quickly or easily. I want him to experience peace and fullness of life. I can't always see how to deal with all the suffering there is in this world today. Much less with the fact that Jesus sometimes heals immediately in the gospel stories. At this point in my own life, and after decades of parish ministry spent by the sides of individuals and families in times of crisis, with countless prayers lifted up, I confess I grow tired of the toll of human suffering.
I am so weary of cancer's relentless swath of misery. I pray for those bowed under the weight of physical pain, of addiction, of illness and injury, of mental illness, of poverty, of oppression, of loneliness, of fear, of grief. I want healing and an end to the overwhelming suffering of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has so changed our lives and our world. There is so much suffering that devastates human lives. I wish I could see sudden, miraculous healings And so sometimes I struggle. Maybe you do too. So for now, I need to cry out. I cry out because I have such trouble seeing how it all works. I cry out my needs and my longings and my desires as loudly and as persistently as I can. I cry out my prayers and I do my very best to trust. Some days I succeed at that better than others. But I try with all my being. I keep crying out because Jesus tells me to. I do it because Jesus asks that urgent, fundamental, and essential question again and again. What do you want me to do for you? It is the question I need to keep listening for and hearing again and again. And the question I need to keep answering again and again. I keep crying out because Jesus is listening to my answers. Jesus hears me, all of me. My voice, my mind, my heart, my whole being. I keep crying out because Jesus is present with me, with each of us, with all of us. Fully, purely, wholly. Because Jesus so cares deeply, basically, profoundly. What do you want me to do for you is Jesus' relentless query. May our answers, our cries, our prayers be just as relentless, just as full-throated and whole and profound. Thanks be to God for the great example of faith and trust and discipleship in Jesus' way given to us by the blind man who sees, called Bartimaeus. In the light of his miraculous healing, may we all better see the Jesus whom we do not fully understand. And thanks be to God that by the grace of the resurrected Christ, one day we shall all be wholly healed. And surely we too 
shall truly see. Amen. Let us join together in a confession of the faith into which we are baptized in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, its only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. <clears throat> Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we give you thanks for generous land that produces abundant harvests. Strengthen and protect all soils, from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands, to patio planters, to fertile valleys, and bless all who lovingly tend them. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Ruling One, we give you thanks for leaders of nations who work to build up the common good. Strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations, that peace extends in every direction. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Healing One, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Providing one, we give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Living one, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. Give us courage to follow in hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you.
Let us pray our offering prayer together. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Glory to you, O God, for your creative word, making and mending all things, evoking the cosmic hymn of praise, and singing a love song for your beloved, your vineyard, your flock, your people. With all creation, we sing glory. Glory. Blessed are you for your liberating word, speaking through Moses and the prophets, encountered in the Gospels, and proclaimed in the assembly your freedom, forgiveness, and life for the world. With the whole world, we say blessing. Blessing. Holy are you, O God, for your living word among us wherever we gather, welcoming everyone to your feast and with grace and generosity, bringing to earth the kingdom of heaven. With saints and angels, we cry holy, holy. holy. Clothe us in your loving spirit, flowing from the crucified and risen one, and keep us awake to your presence in the people and places you call us to serve. Glory and praise and blessing are yours, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you.